Good day to you. How's it going? Today we've got a video for you going over panoramas. And I'm sure you've heard of panoramas before. What are they? It's one of those beautiful shots that includes a giant piece of landscape, maybe cityscape or something else. And we're not going to be necessarily going over how to take a panorama, but more of how to create one once we've captured a bunch of images and we want to combine them into a long single stretched image. So let's get to it. Okay, so I'm in the manager module now and I've got all of my images I've taken from which I'd like to create a panorama. And uh, I did mention that we're going to be going over how to create a panorama, but if you're interested on how you can take one, my colleague created an article and I'll put a link down below. You can click on that and see how you can create one in the field. Okay, so I'm gonna take all of these shots and I'm gonna move here to create and here on click on panorama. Now a new dialog window will open and it'll show me all the pictures that I want to include within that panorama. And in this first step, what we can do if we want is we can easily check or uncheck the images that we want to be included in the panorama. But since uh, I want all of them, I'm just gonna re-click and select and make sure I have all of them included. And the next step. So now is what's important is making sure that I have all the pictures in order. Uh, Zoner Photo Studio, as a software for that matter, can't identify or know in which order you took the pictures. And so that's something you have to manually adjust yourself. Uh, simply what you can do is when you're putting the pictures into the program, you can prepare them by giving them some sort of number. Here I have it by 33, 34, 35, and so on. Um, so that's different ways that you can place them together just so that it's easier for you to organize. But again, Zoner can't organize it for you. So that's something you have to do on your own. And now we're on to the next step. Now in this step, we're given the option of selecting and playing around with the focal length. And focal length is something that each camera, device, be it a DLSLR, or a mirrorless, or a phone, etc. Many of these um, devices have their own data that they put onto a photograph, and Zoner is able to read that uh, information, but it's not necessary to have it, and you can apply the focal length as you wish manually. Uh, in most cases, and in our case today, I'm going to use the automatic mode, but of course, if you want to change it, you can. But I'm staying with automatic today. And now, next step. Okay, so now we have this picture that looks like it's already combined most of our shots together with a bunch of things that look like teeth. What do we do with this? And one more thing I forgot to mention that you can adjust and play with in this part of the setting is that when you're taking a picture, let's say by hand, and you're taking several of those pictures at once across the horizon, there's absolutely no way that you'd be able to keep your shoulders or hands perfectly aligned with the horizon like you would on a tripod, let's say. So in this case, and in this part of the program, you can easily adjust it to your needs and make sure that they line up perfectly. So that's another thing you can do in this step. Now let's move on to the next step. Okay, so in this step, Zoner Photo Studio has automatically created the cropped image for us that it thinks we want to use. Um, I like it the way it is and what Zoner decided to do with it. Of course, if you really wanted to, you can simply click and drag and change the cropping as you wish. Vertically and this way. Okay, but since I like it as is, I'm gonna move on to the next step. Okay, so we covered the various different options. What I'm gonna do is actually open it in develop. Um, that's not something you have to do. And um, I'm gonna open it in develop because I want to edit the panorama a little bit further. That's just my preference and what I wanna do. Um, of course, what you can also do is each set or each series and each photograph within that panorama, you can edit that beforehand in develop so that you already um, are using this sort of style, maybe preset already um, included in each photograph before you create that panorama. So I'm gonna click here on open and develop and it's gonna ask me to save the image. And what I'm gonna do is just leave it as panorama and I'm actually gonna save it as a TIFF file. 
Now the advantage or disadvantage, depending on how you look at it with a TIFF file, is that it's such an enormous file because it contains so much data. It can actually be around 100, even more megabytes big. And so depending on what you want to do, um, that might be an advantage or disadvantage. You can of course save it also as a JPEG and also as another type of file if you wish. Okay, so I'm gonna save it as TIFF. I'm just gonna slightly change the name here. Just so I don't forget. And one more little dialogue is gonna, come, is gonna pop up asking if you want some sort of compression or what sort of mode we wanna use it in. I'm not gonna change anything here. I'm just gonna leave it as is because that's all another rabbit hole we can go down and I don't wanna waste time uh, discussing that today. Okay, so here's our image. It's almost ready to go. And I'm just gonna do a couple more things to it just so that I like it a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit of contrast. Improve the lights a little bit. And same with the shadows. Okay, so there it is. Panorama, super easy. I hope this video was informative for you and that you won't be scared to go out there and take several pictures and have some sort of program stop you from creating something like this. Uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, let us know what you think, and in any case, I hope you have a good one and see you next time. Ciao.